All right, hey y'all. So today we're going to talk about the dietitian and what she wants me to do. So let me just get out of the way that this is what my surgeon recommends. You follow my channel, you already know I'm facing a major spine surgery. It's major. Some of you have had it. You've had it more than once. Some of your spouses have had it. You know what I'm facing and you know what is involved. If my surgeon thought I needed this, whatever she gave me to set myself up for a successful surgery, then bottom line is what I'm doing. That being said, am I ditching Weight Watchers? No. You'll see in a minute, I'm not going to be doing the same thing. It's similar yet different. It's similar eating, just different way to go about it. So I'll still be bringing you WW recipes and giving you points. The difference is maybe the type of ingredients I use will be different from the type of ingredients we used to use. You still use, I used to use, and you'll see again what I mean when I go down my list. So, I hope you understand this is what I have to do for me. If you don't understand, I don't really know what to tell you other than this is what I have to do and this is what I'm going to do. The surgeon, his recommendation comes first. So, that being said, I have taken notes from what I learned from her in the visit and from the materials that she gave me so i figured the easiest way is just to read what i wrote and if we need to discuss it um, we'll discuss it at that time so the first thing portion control is key for now no tracking weighing measuring counting points or calories she doesn't want me to be burdened by the extra commitment when she thinks we can be successful with portion control so this is where it comes down to me she can't do it for me Y'all can't do it for me. Y'all can stay after me. Um, but you can't control my portions. I have to do that. I think she she tells us, and by us I mean um, surgical candidates. She tells us to do this because I think she wants us to learn the healthy habit of just eating a normal portion. Don't pile your plate up like if you're at the buffet. You pile your plate up like they don't make no more when you can't walk right back up in there and get some more. <laughs> Quit eating like you at the buffet, I think is, is her um, point with that. It goes against everything you are trained to think with Weight Watchers weighing and measuring so, just to the when I ate supper last night, the thoughts of this is what I'm supposed to be doing and I don't have to measure it, just control it. It's going to take some getting used to because when you do, when you are on plan and you are measuring and weighing like you're supposed to, it's hard to think that you could actually be successful without doing that. So, that's that's a mindset change. Um. Now, I will send her my weight every weigh-in, and if we're not seeing results in four weeks, we will revisit them and make any adjustments needed. So the things that she's told me to do, if I do them, and I'm going to try my dead-level best to do them, because I really want to be successful in this endeavor and in my surgery. If I'm not showing progress, then we will come back, she said, then we'll start saying, okay, let's let's track that food. Let's see what you're eating. So as long as I'm remaining successful doing it this way, that's what I'll do. I will do this up until the surgery, during the, the recovery, however long they want me to do this, this is what I'm going to do. Get support. I have that because I have y'all and good friends, family, I have support, and I appreciate every one of you. And if you want to come on there and say, hey, did you watch your portions today? I won't be offended. 
because there's going to be days I'm going to need that. I'm going to need somebody to get in my business because I'm going to lose sight of it. That's just part of the journey. We're human and we get off track. Y'all know I'm an emotional eater. So I'm going to have to conquer that. I'm going to have to conquer a lot of things to eat the way she wants me to eat. Because I don't have points to rely on. I can't say, whew, I got X amount of points left for the day. I can get me a goodie. I can't do that. There's there's no more goodie getting. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. This is her sec portion controls, her number one. This is her number two. Half. The plate should be veggies. She says, if putting cheese on my broccoli is the only way I will eat it, then put cheese on it just to make sure I get my veggies in. The other half of the plate should be split between the protein and starch. There's no set amount of servings of each food group for now. Just watch what? Portions. So, it's not a... um exchange diet i guess if if you will like you must have x amount of proteins and starches and fruits and veggies and dairy and all these no there is no set i have a guide of what is considered a serving and you should be mindful of what you eat don't pile you like i said don't pile your plate up be mindful of your portion size but don't weigh it, don't track it, don't don't bother with all that. And don't try to say you have so many that you have to divide out during the day. So like, you know, you got six carbohydrates. Let me decide where to, that's, that's more than she wants to be worried with now. That's one of the things she said. If this is not successful as it is, we might revisit that. We might give you a specific number that you need to eat if you're not learning it with your portion control alone. Now, if she was a drug dealer, <laughs> veggies would be her drug that she pushes. She talked about veggies more than anything. So y'all know that's where I'm going to struggle. I am going to struggle coming up with vegetables that's not going to bore me every single day that covers half my plate. That's going to be hard. I can't eat salad every day, and I can't eat broccoli every day. So I've got to come up with just some good vegetable dishes. Not um, If I want to put cheese on my Brussels sprouts to choke them things down, then I'm going to. I'm not going to drench it. I'm not going to smother it to death. But I'm also not going to, to get vegetables in, I'm not going to make like vegetable casseroles full of cream soup and all this and that. Because to, to me, that takes it too far. This is what she gave me. There's a lot of common sense woven in it. So she tells me you can have cheese on your broccoli if it's going to get that broccoli down your throat. That don't mean to put four gallons of cheese on two pieces of broccoli. I know that. That's common sense. So to me, common sense is don't. Try to disguise all your vegetables in a casserole. So getting half a plate of vegetables in is gonna be a struggle for me, but I'ma give I'm gonna give it the old college try. Her third thing she believes in protein. Protein is important because it keeps you full longer. If eating fruit, and notice I said if. If eating fruit, use it as a snack, but add some protein to it such as grapes and cheese. Also, the cut of meat or the piece of chicken doesn't matter. Eggs, cheese, and yogurt also count as your protein. I asked her, does it matter what kind of chicken I eat? She said, you mean like if you eat a chicken thigh instead of a breast? I said, yes. She goes, nope. I said, well, what about like the fat content of my hamburger? She said, nope. Portion control. She keep coming back to it. Nope. Portion control. So, like last night, we had chicken thighs for supper because I had them in the freezer. And so I was trying to... Oh, I'm so sorry. 
I was trying to use, because I did that little short mini haul for three days, so I was trying to use like the meats I had and then add the veggies and stuff to it. So we had chicken thighs. David had found them on sale. They were like $2 and something for four chicken thighs. And that's why he grabbed them. You know, I told Joan, I said, I feel felt naughty eating that chicken skin. But that's part of it. Portion control was one thigh, not two or three. The fact that I can eat the different cuts of meat without having to worry about it, that differs from WW only in the respect that you have to count points for it. There is no law that says you have to live on boneless, skinless chicken breast on WW. You can have any piece of chicken you want. You just count your points. There is no law that says you have to eat ground turkey or the leanest hamburger that they make. No, you just count your points. You eat what you want and you count your points. Are you catching the theme here? Same principles... I just don't have to track it or weigh it or measure it or count it. No points. That's the basic differences. Weight Watcher says you can eat anything you want as long as it's in your points. On here, the things she says I can eat, Weight Watchers, I could eat it too if I wanted to take the hit for it. So that's just personal. That's that's personal choice. Um. So th th this is no more a diet than what we say Weight Watchers is, a lifestyle. This is a lifestyle. It's just a lifestyle that is a little bit less um, restrictive as far as counting, weighing, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Now, where am I? Eat every three to four hours, which that's cool because that's what I do now. I have to or I, I just I get uh, like that. So we got that one under control. Also, hold on. Whew. I'm tired, can you tell? <laughs> to continue with my meal planning and meal prepping, try not to leave yourself without last-minute options. She said it was so good, the fact that I was already meal planning, because she said a lot of us have trouble in that area if they don't already do it. And some of y'all know that if you don't meal plan, it's hard to start. you you got to get going. And once you do it, you, you know you get used to it, and you realize it's kind of hard to plan a meal if you don't have anything, so <laughs> that meal plan becomes very valuable. And what meal prepping I do, um, I don't do like big, you know, productions. I, I do what I call it grab and go. So those are the things she said I've already got under my belt that at least I don't have to try to learn that the whole time while I'm practicing all this other stuff. She doesn't oh, well, oh. I'm sorry, it started now. She don't want me coming in the door famished and just start scrounging. She says, when you get in trouble. Now this one, this one's going to be hard. No eating two hours before bed. If I had a set bedtime, I could say, okay, I go to bed. Just, just don't have anything to eat after this. I'm not naive enough to know that once I eat my supper to close the kitchen. That's not going to happen with me. I told David, <laughs> if I cannot have a snack before bed, two hours before bed, I'm just going to have to eat my supper and go to bed. <laughs> and not leave myself any room. So I'm going to have to try to learn if I need a little something before bed, which I find myself often needing a little something extra, then I'm going to have to make sure that it's two hours before bedtime. Now this is the biggest thing we talked about as far as being my problem. Stop mindless snacking. So she says, for me personally, no snack between breakfast and lunch, but definitely a snack between lunch and dinner because it's so long. Try to find things to replace nighttime snacking like coloring or needlework, and sip hot tea. And those are her suggestions. The needlework came up because I've got a 
um, little kit coming. I like to do embroidery. I do it as much as my arthritis of my hand allows me to. That's why it's easier to do than cross stitch. I used to cross stitch. Oh, I used to cross stitch a lot when RJ was little. I had, I mean, I had a setup. It was nice. I eventually sold it. That's with everything I've ever owned. Anyway, I do like to do the embroideries. Like if it's already got the pattern stamped on it, then you just do all the different stitches, you know. So this little kit comes with the hoop, which I have hoops and stuff because back last year I had got into embroidery pretty good. So anyway, I had one of those coming. So she said that was something good to keep my hands busy. And you know, oh, oh gosh. You know, Charlene sent me my color book. So I got a, a brand new color book and marker uh, pens that I use. Judy sent me cookbooks. So I got cookbooks. I got things I can do. I've just got to do them to stay out of the snacks. No snacks <laughs> Ain't that what we call them? I can't have no more snacks events. Hot tea. I meant to bring you, I meant to show you what I got. I had an errand I had to run today over near Target. And Target is the only place in town that we can get the Tazo lemon loaf glazed lemon loaf tea and that comes highly recommended from joan and a lot of you i've read on our group love that it's a dessert tea and you use it in place of a snack at night or in place of a dessert she said a lot of us find that it gives them something to do just just sipping that hot tea so i'm, I'm got me some of that today i'm excited to try it i'm gonna try it tonight Dessert teas brings me into the topic of dessert max two times per week. And on those days, I just don't eat a starch for supper. So I can plan two desserts a week. I don't have to stay away from the sweets. She knows that's a problem. We discussed it. We discussed everything. I, I didn't try to hide nothing. I didn't tell her I ate healthy when I don't. I let her know. You... You cannot be fixed or changed or counseled if you don't tell the truth. So no matter what situation you're in, if you go somewhere and they ask you questions where they're trying to help you with something, just be honest. Just suck it up and be honest. You think I like telling her what I have been eating here lately? No. Uh, no. It was embarrassing. But in order for her to see where I was, where she needed to put me, she had to know. She knows I got a sweet tooth. So she's allowing me max two desserts a week. My mind is going, I get two desserts a week. And I'm going to plan them. And guess what? I said, do they have to be sugar free? She said, no, they don't. Common sense tells me that's not a whole jug of ice cream. It's not half a cake. It's not four cupcakes. Ten cookies. That's common sense. So I know I can have just one regular dessert twice a week, and that makes me happy. Here's another one. She doesn't mess with anyone's beverages as long as they're not sugary. I can drink my coffee with my creamer, and I can also drink milk with my meals. She said her words were, I don't mess with anybody's beverages. So as long as I'm not drinking, see right now I'm drinking Diet Mountain Dew. She don't mess with that. If this is regular Mountain Dew, she messes with it. She'll get in your business. Fruit juices, she'll get in your business. Sweetened tea, she'll get in your business. But if it's not sweetened, I don't put sugar in my coffee. I just put that creamer. She didn't care. She didn't care. Have your coffee. Have milk with your meals if you want it. I'm not messing with your beverages. So... I'm happy about that, too. So, see, there's some good things. I told y'all, I said, she's going to drop the hammer on me. And I told her when I got there, I said, she said, what, what do you expect to get from me? I said, I said well, I'm really scared you're going to drop the hammer. She said, I'm not dropping no hammer. I was like, Whew. So, she's not a dietitian of old. Because you know how the dietitians used to be. That's what I had pictured in my mind. But you know, I tell you, I expect the worst. That way when I get it, I'm not surprised. So I was pleasantly surprised at the way she's allowed me to eat. Um, next, this is the same way with WW2. Eating out is a part of life. 
plan those days into my menu. If it will be heavy on carbs, just reduce the carbs the rest of the day. Quote, unquote, life happens. Y'all know y'all heard that over there, Joan? That's about the exact same word she used. Life happens. Same as eating out. If a party or special gathering is coming up, plan for it. Eat less carbs during the day and always more vegetables. She's not pushing low carbs. She absolutely does not push low carbs. She tells you a quarter of your plate is to be your starch. She's just telling you to replace it if you're going to eat out or you're going to go to a party and have cake. That's the replacement for the carb on your plate. Not don't eat carbs. She's giving you the option to work it into your diet. Diet as in what you eat, as in your food. To not add on to it. So don't eat full carbs all day and then add that bunch of sugar at night. Don't do it. Just just replace it. I'm excited about that. I was afraid she would tell me you can never eat out again. Because y'all know Saturdays are eating out day. I've just got to do it within reason. I can't eat it like I used to eat out. But I can eat out within reason. Now, this one I like too. Th this is still Weight Watchers. Just, um, I'll tell you. I'll tell you my thoughts on that. As long as I don't drench my salad or food, I can eat regular salad dressings and condiments. Mayo is okay in chicken, tuna, and egg salad to have it as a protein option. Dairy can be either regular or reduced fat. And it is okay to saute in oil. How is that like Weight Watchers? Because you can do all those things on WW. You just count your points. You take the hit. If you don't want skim milk and you want whole milk, then you work it into your day. The only difference in that, what I used to do, what I'm doing now, is I don't have to count it. I can just have it. The rest of it is portion control. That is, that's what she pushes. She's telling me, just eat regular. Just, just eat regular. Regular. You know, everybody's regular is different. Just watch how much you're eating. She told me, she said, it's not so much what you eat, it's how much of it you eat. So, on Weight Watchers, you can eat as much as you want to eat, as long as you're within your points. So, it's the same in that sense. Now, this is about casseroles and, like, mixed-type foods. She, she, she suggests eating, like, a cup. So, there, I guess you can measure eyeball, whatever. But, you know, a cup of food, if you put that in there and dump it on a plate, it's a lot of food. And then double up on the veggies. So, see, I can still make y'all the casseroles and stuff like I could. Um, I figure if there's things, different things that I eat, figure out there's the cup of it. Throw a double bunch of veggies with it. There's those veggies again. I'm telling you, she's, she's a pusher. She's a pusher. <laughs> now, this one, this one, um, hold on. Lord, I slurped. This one was interesting. On the back page of her um, materials, she had a list of resources, of all kind of resources, food-related. The top was recipe websites. You'll never guess, of the three, what was her number one. Her number one was SkinnyTaste.com. How cool is that? We all know Skinny Taste. We all know Skinny Taste. That was her number one go-to. Then EatingWell.com and CookingLight.com. So I just thought it was interesting that that's just like a lot of us Weight Watchers, we go to Skinny Taste. So I just thought that was pretty cool. Because when I read it, I'm like, oh, and I told her, I'm like, oh, that's one of ours. <laughs> so wrapping this up, Oh, I didn't do as bad as I thought I would. Wrapping this up. You can see, I hope you can see, there are similarities in that same food I ate when I was on Weight Watchers. Same food. Just I can take a little bit more leeway, as in full-fat cheese instead of fat-free or reduced fat. I can put a full-fat cheese in a casserole if I want to. So when I'm doing a recipe for you, Maybe I'll be making it 
with regular cheese, but I'll figure the points for the reduced fat. But you know what? You might use regular cheese. Everybody, I have learned this, especially on our Facebook group, because there's like over 60,000 people. No, not all of them post, but there is a large cross-section of members that post. Some regularly, some just pop in every now and then, but you will see a wide variety of food. There are some women on there that refuse to eat anything but regular cheese. And they take the points hit. Salad dressing. People refuse to eat fat-free salad dressing. They take the hit for it. The difference in when I did Weight Watchers to when I'm doing this is I don't have to count it. I just watch my portion. Just don't drench it. Eat it and go on. Same with milk. Now, we drink skim milk, so... David, I, I might bump it back to 1%, maybe 2 David don't like to go much more than that. He, he, like, he don't like whole milk. I love whole milk, personally. I love it. But I don't buy it. But I can if I want to. I can now eat full-fat cottage cheese. Do you know how happy that makes me? Because I will eat the lower-fat cottage cheese, but I don't like it. I don't like it, but I'll eat it. So knowing that I can eat that, with portion control in mind, <laughs> makes me happy. So she didn't, she she didn't restrict me to the point to where I feel like I am on a diet. This is a lifestyle, the same as WW, just a few little um, technicalities that are different. So. All that being said, I hope you stick with me. I hope you don't mind that I'm going to be doing a little bit different because it's what I got to do and it's what I'm going to do. This is for me. This is all for me. I'm not telling you to change WW and do what I'm doing because a dietitian told me to do it. She didn't tell you to do it. She told me to do it. Don't do what I'm doing just because I said that's what I'm doing. Thinking because it came from a dietitian, it has to be better. No. There is no better way for every person. She's a dietitian, but that don't mean her way is the best for you. You, you might be best at keto. Maybe that's how your body responds. You might be best at counting calories because that keeps you in check. You might be best at WW, counting points and weighing and measuring because that keeps you in check. You might be best at being a vegetarian. Maybe you don't eat meat. Maybe vegetarian keeps you on track. There are so many ways. You might even be the best at Slim Fast. If Slim Fast is what you use and it works for you, then you know what? You go, girl. Ain't nobody around here, not me, telling nobody else how to lose weight or how to eat. That's not my style. My style is, you do what is right for you, and I'm going to do what is right for me. So when I say, don't do what I'm doing, it's not because I'm saying, oh, I got the big head. Don't you, don't you be changing because I change. I'm saying, don't change just because a dietitian said it's right for me. Don't think, oh, well, then it must be right for me. If you think something like that is something you can live with, you do it, but you do it on your own. Because don't come back and say, Ooh, I did what you was told to do and I gained weight. I don't want to hear that mess. Because I'm mm -mm, washing, my, <laughs> washing my hands of the responsibility. <laughs> so this was just for me. That's why she asked me so many questions. That's why she wanted to know my habits and the foods I ate and how I slept and everything she asked was to tailor a plan just for me. So, I hope you get a better glimpse into what I will be doing for the next considerable little bit. And thanks for sticking around and making it all the way through 30 minutes of... <laughs> so, you know what? Yep, I'm not going to have to cut but a few seconds off of those phone calls 
So you getting you getting a half hour, and I appreciate you being here, and I thank you a lot, and I will see you later.